Hello, and welcome to the eighth tutorial based on the topics presented at IB Experts Firebird School, held by Holger Klemt and Jason Chapman, as part of the International Firebird Conference 2007. We'll continue in part two of our tutorial series, Database Design and Modeling, with a brief introduction to dependencies, visualizing the data model, comparing data models, and understanding and using views. Dependencies. If I want to delete a customer, I need to first find out what it is linked to and what is linked to it. This allows you to go and have a look at your table. Here we've got the order line table and we can say, OK, what do you depend on? Because now we haven't just built a load of independent objects, they're all linked and associated with each other. And if you want to change certain things, if you want to drop that table for instance, other things depend on it and it depends on other things. If we go to the IB Expert Tools menu and select Dependencies Viewer, we can take a look at this. Who is the customer connected to? Used from Customer History and Orderline as a foreign key. Orderline has a relationship to the procedure Create Orders and Delete All. These also reference two triggers. So if I want to delete the whole table, I need to ensure that these objects no longer use this table. The table itself also has a relationship to product and orders. If you wish to look at another table, simply click on the name at the top right for a full list of all tables. So if I now go to the product table, here I have the customer history, inventory, order line, product tables which all have a connection to the product table. All these objects first need to be examined and altered before I can delete anything in the product table. On the other hand, product is dependent on category and product. That is the two foreign keys defined there. So you can see with the aid of IB Expert, it's quick and simple to trace any dependencies before deleting a database object. Visualizing the data model, database designer. The IB Expert tools menu offers a great visualization tool, the database designer. It can be used to initially design and visualize a new database. You can quickly and easily define what goes where and where are your key relationships, etc. It can also be used to graphically document an existing database, providing a logical view of the database structure and is an extremely quick and simple method to create views. Using the reverse engineer feature, I can create a visual model of my database. Here, I can define a new table. I'll call it PX. I can define the fields here. Then I can use the designer menu to generate a script, update the existing database. IB Expert checks what is already in the database and produces a script, which I can execute so that my changes take effect. So you can see, the database designer is a two-way tool. Another function is subject areas, for example, for sales. Here I would like to see the customer table and the orders table and saw them here in this subject area somewhat differently. I can alter the model options for example, automatically trace links, which displays the relationships in an angular form. When I've completed my model, I can switch between the main subject area and my specified one as wished. So, databases can be created or updated based on amendments made in the designer by generating and running a script. They can be saved to file, exported and printed. Comparing data models. In IB Expert, I can say I would like to compare all the metadata in DB1 with the metadata in DB2. And I would like to generate a script of the differences in DB2. In Firebird, it's interesting to note that I can change a table using SQL while the system is online up and running. I can add fields during runtime. I can alter the complete structure whilst users are using the system. Each table in a Firebird interface database has its own metadata changes counter. The metadata of each table can be altered 255 times, which means adding or removing columns, changing field types, etc. This limitation is because Firebird and Interbase set an internal one-byte flag which is stored alongside each dataset, representing the so-called record structure version. For example, 
If you have 1,000 data sets in a table with five fields and you extend the table to six fields and then add a further 1,000 data sets, the old first 1,000 data sets are not revised at all but are still stored with the old data structure unless you have instructed the server to set the data content of the sixth field for these old data sets at null or a specified default value. If this new field is created with a not null constraint, these old fields will all need to be updated. The internal flag simply ensures that a maximum of 255 such changes are possible. When any of these counters reach the value of 255, it is not possible to alter any tables any further, and a database backup and restore is necessary. The backup and restore ensure that all datasets are now stored with the current single valid record structure, and you can continue to make further table alterations. So this is not really a limitation, it's simply a situation when you have to perform a backup and restore. IB Expert shows you which table has the least number of changes left in the status bar at the bottom. For example, 254 changes of table, table name, left. Understanding and using views. We were talking about views earlier. A view can be likened to a virtual table. It can be treated in almost all respects as if it were a table, using it as the basis for queries and even updates in some cases. It is possible to perform select, project, join and union operations on views as if they were tables. Only the view definition is stored in the database. It does not directly represent physically stored data. For example, select star from VW product short. This simplifies the visual display of complex data considerably. Let's go back to our select from which we generated a new table. Select star from customer, where not exists. Select star from orders, where orders.customerID equals customer ID. Click the icon, create view. Change the view name if wished. Generate the view and compile. Now I can select star from customer without orders. Sometimes it is necessary to alter and even split tables in your production database. Usually, you'll want to retain the old structure for compatibility reasons. To achieve this, you can use updatable views. Simple views that only look at one table can be updated just by updating them as you would a normal table. But complicated ones, where you join many tables, can still be updated. You just have to put the logic in yourself so that Firebird knows what to change and where. We'll take a look at this using the customer table. I'll accelerate the process by simply clicking the Create View button and add to this view a Before Insert, a Before Update and a Before Delete trigger. When I insert data into a view, the view does not contain any data itself, but I can make an insert into a view and the data is inserted into the customer table. Before Update, Before Delete. And now I could, for example, alter something in the view. So if we send an update command to the view, the view has a before update trigger. Because it can't perform any updates itself, it passes it on. That means I can work on this data and insert this here. As select ID, first name instead of last name, address one, address two, etc. Here, all the data is in the view, but not the last name. This is a great way to make data anonymous. For example, if you need a clear reference to the data, but these shouldn't be identifiable, I can work on this data without a problem and also update it. I can also alter the last name. It is passed on, but I can't see it in my view. You simply need to write a suitable before insert trigger. Another good reason for introducing views is for reasons of compatibility following data model improvements and the subsequent metadata alterations. For example, you need to split your product up into two smaller tables, product main and product detail. All new triggers, procedures, exceptions, etc. will be written based on these new table names and contents. However, if you do not wish to update and alter all existing dependencies, you can simply create a view with the old table name and the old table structure. Universal triggers can be used to forward any data alterations made here onto the new tables. So you can see, you can revise your own data model bit by bit as and when necessary. 
Using updatable views, you can incorporate a compatibility mode in your database. This way, you can incorporate old data models and let them run their course via views and add intelligent and improved structures which will still work parallel to the old system. So, that was our introduction to database design and modeling. A transcript of this tutorial can be downloaded by all IB Expert registered full version holders from the customer download area at www.ibexpert.com. All topics presented here are also documented in detail on our website. We hope this tutorial has been of help to you and look forward to publishing our next subject, Writing Stored Procedures and Triggers. Goodbye for now and thank you from all of us at IB Expert.